Hey guys, welcome back to my channel, and if you're new here, my name is Tanika. Today's video is going to be my current makeup wish list and updates. So I'll link my last video down below where I talked about things that were currently on my wish list. And then in today's video, I'm going to follow up on those things, let you know about the products that I've purchased or I haven't purchased. And I also have a few things on my list that I want to talk about that I am not going to buy and giving you my opinions on those. So if this sounds good to you, make sure you give this video a thumbs up and let's get into it. So starting with some updates, the first thing I picked up that was on my previous wish list was the e.l.f. 16 hour camo concealer. Now I saw this become available on the e.l.f. Australia website and it was like $15. We have half the shades that they do in the US, but there were still some really fair shades available. So I end up buying it from the website, but I put this on my Insta stories and one of my friends, Courtney messaged me and she was like, stop what you're doing. I found this at Kmart for $10. So I end up getting a refund through the website, went to Kmart and picked it up there for the $10 price tag. And oh my God, I am obsessed with this concealer. I feel like it's all I rave about on my channel now. I will link my full review down below if you haven't seen it, but this is definitely one of my favorite full coverage concealers and it's just so fair, it's affordable. I love it. The next product to update you on is the Hourglass Vanish Liquid Foundation. Now, this is quite an expensive product here in Australia. I'm pretty sure it retails for like $86 or something. So I didn't buy the full bottle, but I did go and get some samples. And I'm so glad I did because I end up doing a sample wear test review video. And through that video, I found that this foundation definitely did not work for me. And I am so glad I didn't spend the money on the full size bottle. Next is the NYX Can't Stop Won't Stop Loose Powder. And I end up picking this up from the Cult Beauty website, but I did see it in Priceline the other day as well. So it is available here in Australia now. So I am liking this powder. It's very matte. So if you have drier skin, I don't recommend using it. I can't personally use it with the NYX Can't Stop Won't Stop Foundation because the mixture of those two together is just way too matte for me, but I don't know, I'm kind of in two minds, like I like it, but it's not that much of a standout. And the one thing I cannot stand about this is the freaking packaging. So here's what it looks like. It's just like a normal powder. You got the holes, you tip it out. Usually I would tip this into the lid, but the lid has like extra piece of plastic, which I think is meant to be like a stopper so that all the powder doesn't come out. But I can't tip the powder into the lid to use it. And like, you can't really shake it into here. Like it's just, and so because of that, I find myself not reaching for it very often because I find it's not very user friendly. And then the last product on my updates, I actually found the L'Oreal Infallible Full Wear Concealer at Priceline the other day. I was not expecting this. I thought this will take forever to get to Australia. But oh my God, it was here. So I end up buying it. In Australia, it's called the Infallible More Than Concealer and it doesn't come in as many shades. I picked up the lightest one. This is 322 Ivory and it's not very light. I'll give you a swatch. So this one here is the L'Oreal Fresh Wear Concealer and this is the e.l.f. Camo Concealer in Fair Beige. So this isn't even the lighter shade in the e.l.f. concealers. So it's a bit of a bummer that the lighter shade isn't very fair, but what can you do? I will still give it a go and see how it performs. All right, on to some products that are on my wish list. The first one is another concealer. <laughs> I'm like weirdly obsessed with concealers, but I saw that the Too Faced Born This Way concealer range is being expanded. <sighs> Finally, I went into store and swatched the lighter shades in that range and they were just like, they're, they're not light, okay? They were not light and they were so warm and yellow undertoned. It just wouldn't work for anyone with fair skin. So I am so glad to see that the range is expanding and I will definitely be picking that one up because I've heard great things about the Born This Way concealer. Another product from Too Faced I want to try is their new mascara and it is called the Damn Girl Mascara. I think it's just the packaging that really gets me. I'm not even that intrigued in the actual formula. <laughs> I think that drugstore mascaras do just as good of a job as a high-end mascara. I don't think there's really a need for high-end mascaras, but this packaging is just like, 
stunning. So really that's the only reason I want it. It does have a nice big fluffy wand, which I love, but I've just scrolled over to the before and after picture and okay, her lashes are looking a bit clumpy. I'll post the photo here so you can see. I don't know, I think I might wait to see and hear a few more reviews before I go ahead and buy something that I don't really need and I just like the packaging of. <laughs> Next, I have some foundations I'm interested in and the first one is by Anastasia Beverly Hills. It says here that it is launching in August and it comes in 50 shades. So I think that is something I'm going to be keeping my eyes out on, my eyes peeled, my eyes on. I'll be interested to know what kind of finish it has and I can't wait to see the shade range. The next foundation is called the Stay Naked by Urban Decay. First of all, the packaging looks stunning. Uh -huh. And it says it is a liquid foundation available in 50 shades coming soon to Urban Decay. So it doesn't say much else about the finish or anything. Hang on, let me zoom up on the bottle. Weightless liquid foundation up to 24 hour wear. So again, it's something I will be keeping my eyes on. Why can't I think of the sentence I'm trying to say? Next is another concealer I'm interested in. This is the Maybelline Superstay Full Coverage Concealer. I am absolutely obsessed with the Superstay foundation. So if this is anything like that, it's looking good. It comes in 12 shades. It says it has a smooth, seamless finish, waterproof, transfer and smudge resistant. The lighter shade ivory actually looks quite fair. So hopefully that comes to Australia, but probably not. Next are the Huda Beauty Neon Obsessions palettes. Now, at first I wasn't really interested in these, but then I saw a few looks start popping up. I had a closer look at the swatches and I was like, okay, these are really pretty, especially the neon pink and the neon orange palette. I'm in two minds because I feel like they're not something I absolutely need. I'm sure if I look through my collection, I would have most of these shades, but they're just so pretty, you know? <laughs> and the last thing on the list that I was a little bit unsure about, but I've definitely made up my mind now, is the Jaclyn Hill Cosmetics Lipstick Range. Mm. Okay, so when I first saw her video, I was like, I thought it was a really good release. I was like, everyone needs a nude lipstick and she's got an entire range for every skin tone. It looks great. And I even thought about purchasing a few of them because I love nude lipsticks. Boy, am I glad I didn't. So I saw a few videos pop up on YouTube of people just saying like, Jaclyn Hill's lipsticks, bad, this, that, that, that. And I just thought, people have got to hate on her. Like, they they just have to, they can't help it. But then I saw Raw Beauty Christy posted a video. It was like 50 minutes long, but you know I sat there and watched that whole thing because I freaking love her. And holy, <laughs> okay, go watch the video for yourself. But oh my God, they, they just look bad, okay? There's definitely production issues there because there were lumps in them. There were like little hairs in them. A lot of the comments were saying it's mold. So mm. now onto some other products that I definitely will not be purchasing. First up is the Anastasia Beverly Hills and Alyssa Edwards, is it? Yes, the Alyssa Edwards palette. When I first saw this palette, I think the pink just really threw me. I don't know, I just don't like the look of the actual palette. I feel like the pink is just too bold. It's not for me. The colors inside, when I first look at it, they don't really interest me. When I saw swatches, I was like, oh, okay. These are actually nice shades, but I don't think I need it. It's literally just some pinks and purples. You've got a few browns, a maroon, a yellow, a blue, a gold. I'll just go through and explain every color, but yeah. You can have a look at the picture yourself. I feel like I've got these colors in my collection, so it's a no from me. Next on the no list is the new Jeffree Star Jawbreaker collection. It just doesn't speak to me, you know? I do like the smaller palette better than the bigger palette, but when I look at a palette, I like the colors to be like, like a rainbow, you know? Like it goes from yellow to green to blue. When they're all jumbled up like this, I find it hard to look at it and go, okay, that color would look good with that or that with that. I don't know, does your brain work like that? <laughs> There's also the lip glosses he recently released. The colors are just weird. 
Like, I think there is a few nudes which could be okay, but I was watching a video by Beauty News and they showed close-ups of the swatch photos, like on the lips, and they looked terrible. I'll try and insert one here. I don't know how you're trying to sell products with these photos, you know? It's just, it doesn't look good, it looks streaky, it looks patchy. Not for me. And then the last thing I want to talk about that I will not be buying is anything from the Kylie Skin range. Obviously, I am not her target audience, which is fine. But one thing that really frustrated me about the release is that she released makeup wipes. Like, okay, I understand that a large majority of us still have makeup wipes in our house. I personally use the Basu makeup removing cloths to remove my makeup. They are reusable and you can wash them in the machine. But I do have makeup wipes here for cleaning over my products and wiping swatches off my hands and things like that. But I've definitely reduced the amount that I use. Now my problem is that Kylie has such a huge brand and such a huge influence. And these young people are going to buy this skincare and they're going to buy these makeup wipes because they say Kylie on them. Don't you think that as such a big company, they could have come out with a reusable makeup removing cloth? Like, as someone with such a big influence, I think she could be doing better things for the environment. Like, I'm not saying she has to do all these crazy things, but you know, it takes small steps. And I feel like this could have been a small step to helping the environment. I don't know, it just gets me irked up that she has such a large influence, especially on young girls, and I feel like just with that particular product, she could have done better. But anyway, that is all from me today. I hope you enjoyed watching. Make sure you leave me any of your thoughts down below in the comments, because I would love to have a chat about it. I hope you are all having a fantastic day. If you're new here, make sure you look around and I'd love it if you would consider subscribing and make sure you all have that notification bell on too so you know when I upload. All right, thank you again so much for watching and I will see you all in the next video. Bye.